Hey everybody. Um, you know, a lot of people struggle with reading the Bible or have just given up on it. And I don't blame them. And people have all sorts of reasons for that, for needing to step away, to take a break, to not read it at all, or just really just to give up on the whole thing. And again, I get it. I think people have some really good reasons for doing that. I want to suggest that um, at the root of at least some of those struggles with reading the Bible is the, the set of expectations that we come to the Bible with, right? Um, and these are expectations usually that are taught to us at some point in churches or whatnot. And really it's the expectation that the Bible will act something like a flawless and clear heavenly rule book for us to live our lives by. And uh, that is, uh, I think, a very troubling and very problematic way to come to the Bible. That's a troubling expectation to have because the Bible simply doesn't meet those expectations. And what I found to be true, at least in my own thinking and my own journey of faith, is that some of the things that people feel are really troubling about the Bible, I'm talking about people who want to sort of defend it as something like a rule book, um, they wind up running up against, let's say, data in the Bible itself that make it very difficult to maintain a rule book view of things. And I've distilled those properties of the Bible into three words that I think are really helpful for describing really how the Bible works, how it behaves, some of its core characteristics, one of which is that it's very ancient right? The Bible is an ancient book. You know, David is 3,000 years removed from our day, King David. Um, and he's as far removed backwards in time as the year 5,000 is removed for us forward in time. It's an ancient time, an ancient culture, and a lot of assumptions were made about the nature of reality, about the nature of God, about pretty much everything. We're reading ancient Iron Age literature. And that right away brings us to a place where we have to do some thinking when we read this book. Like, how do we bring an ancient book like this into our current moment? And that can be a struggle. I think it's a worthwhile struggle, but it can be a real struggle. But if, if we don't see the antiquity of it all, we're going to be, be like, you know, there's no way I'm paying attention to anything this book has to say. Uh, the second thing is that the book is ambiguous. It's really not very, very clear. It doesn't work well as a rule book, um, in part because uh, we just have, you know, things that are assumed to be known in antiquity, but that we don't really understand today. Again, we don't work the way, we don't think the way the biblical writers thought, okay? So even something like, you know, uh, love your neighbor as yourself, when you get down to it, it's pretty ambiguous. What does it mean to love your neighbor as yourself? My dogs just showed up. Um, speaking of loving your neighbor as yourself, anyway... Um, but it is ambiguous, and you have, uh, you know, laws in the Bible about, you know, keep the Sabbath or don't, don't murder. And people have been asking for forever, what does it mean to, like, keep the Sabbath? What can you do? What can't you do? What does it mean to kill? Can you, can you like, never kill? Children, obey your parents, it says in the New Testament. Always, like, what if your parents are drug runners? I mean, how, how do you, how does that work? So the Bible is ambiguous. And the third thing, which for me is really the most important, is that the Bible is diverse. So it's ancient, ambiguous, and diverse. It's diverse because the Bible was written, <clears throat> and when I say Bible, I mean the Christian Bible, what we call the Old Testament and the New Testament as well, was written probably over roughly a period of about 1,200 years by different people, different walks of life, different historical, political circumstances, all sorts of things, and you're bound to have differences of opinion. And I think those differences are actually gold. That diversity that we find in the Bible is beautiful because we're watching biblical writers actually at times flatly disagree with each other about things like what God is like. Think about that. That's in the Bible. Um, complaining about God. All sorts of things because the circumstances demand it. And I think that's a beautiful thing because it models for us a similar kind of faith to think about what it is we're doing when we think about God today. You know, what is God like for us? We have to work that out. That's just not laid out for us because 
the way God is laid out in the Bible is diverse. It's ambiguous and it's ancient. We are never relieved of the responsibility of, um, uh, of working out what it's like for God to be with us here and now. That's always our responsibility and it's not supposed to be easy. Anyway, um, a lot of these thoughts I have in a book I wrote a couple of years ago, How the Bible Actually Works. And if you're interested, we do have a six-week um, video-based class that uh, you can get on our website at The Bible for Normal People. You can find it real fast. And it's a six-week video class that's based on this book, How the Bible Actually Works. So check it out if you have time. Okay, folks, thanks a lot. See you later.